How many times have you bought an item that didn't look the same after a few washes? Today we're going to talk about something that's happened to all of us at some point. Clothing that doesn't hold up. But how do we recognize good quality? It starts with understanding the different types of fabric. Each fabric has its own quality characteristics and attributes. But that's just the beginning. Good craftsmanship and durability are crucial. A seam that holds, a fabric that retains its shape and colors that don't fade. In this video I'll show you what to look for to judge the quality of your clothing and the avoid bad purchases. Together we'll take a little journey through the world of fabrics and their processing and learn how to recognize true quality. After these approximately 12 to 30 minutes you'll know everything you need to know to distinguish good from bad and really be able to talk about the topic of price performance. Just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's high quality. And just because something is cheaper doesn't mean it's of inferior quality. After this video you will definitely be a smarter shopper. To give you a checklist that is as realistic as possible let's just see simulate a purchase and proceed step by step. Let's pretend you're in a branch of a fashion store you trust and you take an item of clothing off the shelf that you like. You pick it up and examine the garment. Step 1. Checking the material composition. An item has a great touch, it feels high quality, delicate and soft and you might think what feels high quality must also be high quality, right? To answer this question we have to look at the material composition which we find on the small tag on the inside of each item. But of course this only helps if you can even decode the hieroglyphics. We first divide them into two main categories, natural fibers and synthetic fibers. Natural fibers include plant-based fibers such as linen or cotton and animal-based fibers such as silk and all types of wool from sheep's wool to cashmere and angora. Natural fibers are considered to be of higher quality because they are particularly recommended for sensitive skin, they are biodegradable, very comfortable to wear and allow the skin to breathe thanks to their good air permeability. This means that you sweat less in summer and natural fibers provide better warmth in winter. So if you sweat excessively in your wool sweater maybe check the material composition to see if synthetics have been used. I go into more detail about the material suitable for winter in the video 30 outfits for winter. I even dedicate an entirely style guide to linen, both can be found linked below. But you will also most certainly come across the materials modal, viscose, tensile or lyocell. These fibers are cellulosic synthetic fibers that have a natural origin, namely wood, but have been chemically processed. This gives them great material properties such as high permeability, they're light and soft on the skin, wrinkle resistant and they don't shrink when washed. In addition to these cellulosic synthetic fibers there are also man-made synthetic fibers such as polyester, spandex and acrylic which are obtained from petroleum and converted into fibers in mechanical processes. That's why I always have to smile when I see climate activists wearing items made of synthetic fibers. But well, probably a different topic I guess. These synthetic fibers help with elasticity, are very stable and durable and of course extremely weather resistant. Polyacrylic for example is used as a fur imitation because it has a puffy structure. It's crazy. If you're interested in building your wardrobe from scratch or just broadening your knowledge in general, subscribe to my paid newsletter where I introduce you to brands, give you outfit suggestions and shopping links and generally explain all sorts of men's fashion related topics. You'll find the link at the top of my video description. If you look at the material composition of the item in question you will find a mix of materials in most cases. And that naturally raises the question, does it make an item immediately worse if not only natural fibers but also synthetic fibers are used? No, that's the exciting part about it. Wearing an item of clothing that is made entirely of synthetic material doesn't feel particularly good on the skin. Or it can start to smell relatively quickly like the football jersey back in the day when young Justus Hansen was doing a more or less decent job in defense for Teutonia Kappan. Likewise, a 100% cotton product is unfortunately no longer an absolute sign of quality since cotton production has been so heavily optimized for fast fashion that very cheap cotton is sometimes used and this can shrink a lot when washed. However, we will come back to cotton in a moment. It is therefore not directly reprehensible but sometimes good for the comfort or even the durability of your piece of clothing if a small amount of synthetics such as spandex or polyester has been processed. This can lead to a longer shelf life and stretchability of the substances. But even if the blend is not an instantly bad sign, it should be kept to a minimum. With spandex or elastin, a proportion of 3% is often enough to make a significant difference in terms of comfort. If you want to talk about quality clothing, the material mix should consist mostly of natural fibers and the proportion of polyester, spandex and acrylic should remain as low as possible. You should definitely avoid anything with more than 40% synthetic content. You should also try and smell the garment. If it has a chemical 
smell, you should stay away from it. The demand on the material composition may be different when it comes to a sporty wardrobe and technical yarns come into play. However, since we're not preparing for the next New York Marathon here, but rather build a timeless men's wardrobe, synthetics should be avoided if possible. So since you now know how to confidently deal with the terms on the label, this will give you a lot of information about the quality of the item in question and whether the price is justified or not, especially if you're buying particularly expensive items. As I just mentioned, I would also like to talk about cotton and wool again. Otherwise, it feels like I would be leaving out an important part of identifying quality since these fabrics are among the most widely used materials in the fashion industry. Let's start with cotton. How do I recognize high quality cotton? The most important aspect of high quality cotton is the length of the fibers, also called staple. The longer the fiber, the silkier and smoother the end product, such as your t-shirt or sweater for example. They are short, medium and long staple cottons. Short staple cotton has a length of less than 20 millimeters. Ordinary and the most common cotton worldwide has a staple length of 20 to 28 millimeters. And the best and finest cotton is either Pima cotton from the USA or Egyptian cotton, both of which have a staple length of over 35 millimeters. The only problem for the consumer is that it is not possible to tell from the label whether the cotton is short or long staple. The following points are important for you to check. A good cotton product is exceptionally soft. Short staples make it more difficult to spin a smooth yarn because tiny fiber ends often stick out in all directions, roughening the fabric so to speak. Another tip is to check the fabric for traces of pilling when you buy it. High quality cotton is less prone to the unloved fuzzing and should not be present on new garments. And because cotton has to be spun, it's worth taking a look at the threads of the garments. One sign of quality is as few gaps as possible and another is no irregularities in the thickness of the individual threads. Nevertheless, the quality of a fabric often only becomes apparent after washing. Good cotton remains soft and does not wear out even after repeated washes. And how does the quality check compare for wool? Fortunately, very similar. The most important points in a nutshell. No pilling. A small amount of synthetic fibers is fine for stability. An even mesh is important. For woven wool fabrics, you should look for a not free appearance. And the wool shouldn't be scratchy. Now that we've covered the topic of material, let's move on to the next point for the quality check, namely checking the finishing. You can quickly tell whether the quality meets expectations by looking at the seams at the buttonholes. Buttonholes should be neatly finished and not fray. You should also test the buttons. Are they comfortable to close without much effort or do they stay put? When it comes to material, high quality buttons are made of mother of pearl, wood, horn, metal or leather, which is especially important for a very expensive clothing. But plastic or resin buttons on your clothing are not bad as long as they don't look cheap at first glance and are at least color matched to the item as in the example of a trench coat. Every small additional detail speaks for a higher level of effort. It is also important to take a closer look at the buttons on jackets and coats. Are they securely and above all clean and firmly sewn on? The thread should form a clear pattern on the button so that it holds well and should not just have been pulled randomly through each hole. The difference between jackets are more body hugging and thus finer clothing is that buttons on jackets have to be much more durable. This also means that they ideally have a stem or a neck which makes them even more robust and leaves space for the material button underneath. The buttons on Hiltel trousers for example are provided with a stem. Since these are so stable, Hiltel deliberately does not add any additional buttons to the trousers because they assure that none will come loose. Great quality promise. Also, just close the buttons on your jacket and see if both sides of the jacket are the same length. Because sometimes, though rarely, the buttonholes are not set correctly and the jacket is a little lopsided as a result. If so, this happens most often with fast fashion clothing. Furthermore, it is also important to check the appliques and buttons. Are they for decoration or do they also serve a function? If you are thinking of buying a new jacket or suit, be sure to check the buttons and the buttonholes on the sleeves. Every jacket has several buttons attached there, but the question is, can you really unbutton them? In the past, there was no question about it, but nowadays when every buttonhole costs time and material, the buttons are attached but only as a mock-up and cannot be unbuttoned. Not that this is essential, but it is again a sign of quality and effort. Try it on a Zara jacket and you'll understand what I mean. Let's talk about zippers briefly. Briefly because the points are relatively self-evident. You can recognize poor quality by the fact that, firstly, the zipper is difficult to hook in place. Secondly, it often gets stuck and, thirdly, it closes with difficulty instead of running smoothly. Fourthly, the worst case could be that the teeth open again after closing, which tends to happen more often with a cheap zipper under a little more pressure. Incidentally, two-way zippers break more often and will therefore potentially cause you more trouble. The best brands for zippers is Yoshida Kogyo, Kabushi 
Tiki Kaisha, better known as YKK. If all the buttons or zippers are intact, take a look at the seams. Neatly finished seams are straight and have a short stitch length. This short stitch length helps the seams to stay in shape because the greater the distance between the individual stitches, the more material in between has room to work. If the seams bulge or buckle, you can assume that the stitching is poor. A little test to assess the quality of the seam is, when you stretch the garment a little at the seam and pull it apart, the seam should remain flat. If the work was not done properly here, you will see it. The seams also play a role in the case of eye-catching or large-scale pattern pieces. If care is taken to ensure that the patterns run exactly along the seam, the item looks as if it has been made from a single piece. If the manufacturer doesn't pay attention to that, you'll see it and you can't unsee it afterwards anymore. Especially for us men, this is is very noticeable in the case of pinstripe suits or window pane check patterns. And those of course are points to look out for in a suit that is north of $2000. Once the seams look fine, we should also turn the item inside out and take a look at the hem. In textiles, the hem is the edging of the piece of fabric, for example the part of the clothing that is not visible from the outside and where producers sometimes cut corners. Your items should not have any open fabric edges so that the fabric can fray. If they've kept it very simple, you will find a zigzag stitch, but the overlock stitch is much better. It is particularly good because, on the one hand, the overlock machine cuts the edge with its small knives when making the stitch and, on the other hand, the yarns then also wrap around the fabric edge, thus closing it neatly. There is also bias tape finishing, double folded hems and much more, but that would really go beyond the scope here. Just make sure that the finishing has been done properly and that there is no chaotic stitching. Let's stay with the edge of the fabric and talk about the hem allowance or seam allowance. This is another way to tell that the brand didn't skimp when making your piece of clothing. The hem allowance is the distance between the actual seam and the trimmed edge. On the one hand, this allows a more beautiful finishing to be achieved, for example with a double folded hem. On the other hand, this additional fabric is also great for sleeves or trousers because you can easily rework the item. You often won't find this in fast fashion brands because they do everything they can to use as little material as possible. The last step to check on the inner construction is the lining. Unless it's a summer item, which mostly is unlined, your coat, jacket or blazer should have a lining. This should be made of a breathable material such as viscose, silk, satin or cotton. Polyester only gets sweaty and smells unpleasant. Another reason your lining shouldn't be of poor quality is because if it has no back pleats and is not calculated with a slight excess of material at the edge, it tends to tear or stretch when worn. Let's also talk about color again. How does it even happen that color fades? Frequent washing, especially at high temperatures, can cause colors to bleed. In addition, some textiles find it particularly difficult to retain colors. For example, natural fibers such as cotton are generally not as color fast as their synthetic counterparts. In addition to choosing a more gentle wash cycle, you can also choose a higher quality from a material point of view. Jacquard fabric. Jacquard is a collective term for fabrics made of all kinds of materials, silk, viscose, wool or cotton, with a woven or knitted pattern. Jacquard is better and also more expensive because with a print, only the pattern or color is printed on the fabric, but with jacquard, the pattern is woven into the fabric. Accordingly, the jacquard garment is significantly more durable and the pattern cannot fade or even wash out completely over time. How do I check the quality online? Finally, there is an important question of how to check the quality online. The most important aspect here is to check the material composition and read the product description. For a high quality and expensive product, the description will also list relevant selling points and highlight special materials. Not always, but often. I would also work a lot with the images and, if possible, zoom in on the details and also look closely how the fabrics sit and falls on the models. Heavier, high quality fabric falls more naturally. Of course, they can also fake a lot with retouching to present something perfectly. But with the points mentioned above and an experienced eye, you will also get better and better at distinguishing what's good quality and what isn't even online. A lot of information, so here's a brief summary and checklist that you can use for a quick and effective in-store quality check. Step one, check the material composition. Step two, look for an even mesh on woven fabrics. Step three, are the buttons clean and firmly sewn on? And does the zipper look high quality? Step four, are the seams and buttonholes neatly finished? Step five, has the hem been neatly finished? Is there a seam allowance? Step six, if there is a pattern, is it neatly finished at the seams? The topic of quality is incredibly diverse and can be expanded into various areas. It is impossible to cover it all in a video. In case I've forgotten something from your point of view or if you have something to add, you would be doing the community a great favor by simply leaving your feedback in the comment section. And if you guys are interested, I will collect all the info and make it available in the archive of my paid newsletter to which you will have full access to. 
You'll find the link at the top of the video description. And guys, I would also like a really funny outro, but I am super worn out from watching all those one-on-one -on -one suing videos from all kinds of moms explaining what a hem allowance is, how you clean this and how you clean that, because I didn't want to mess up. You think the world of YouTube is deep and dark when it comes to conspiracy theories? Then take a completely different turn and you'll end up in the world of Patricia from Suing Unlimited explaining to Marjorie how to do a cross stitch. Then again, Agnes ruffles up in the comments and Abigail supports her. That is absolutely wild what's going on here. But see you next time, guys. You're a style consultant. <laughs>